Hello, I am Professor Joseph Gleason from the University of California, San Diego and Rady Children's Institute for Genomic Medicine. And I'm joined by Professor Suzanne Shrestha from La Jolla Institute for Allergy and Immunology, both here in La Jolla. Today we'll be talking about a recent study published in Neuron entitled Zika virus protease cleavage of host protein septin 2 mediates mitotic defects in neuroprogenitors. There's little doubt now that Zika infection during pregnancy can lead to microcephaly, but the question is how? Previous work found that Zika infection in neuroprogenitors led to cell death accompanied by failed cytokinesis or cell division, evidenced by cells with multiple centrosomes. We previously found several genetic forms of microcephaly that were characterized by multiple centrosomes, such as mutations in SIT and KIF14. These proteins are localized to the cleavage furrow during telophase when cells are dividing. And we wondered whether there was any connection between the genetic and the viral forms of microcephaly. Zika is a member of the flavivirus class of RNA viruses. Their genome encodes a single polypeptide that is cleaved into 10 different proteins that are required for the completion of the viral life cycle. But introduction of any of these 10 proteins into developing neurons was not sufficient to mediate cell death. The NS2B and NS3 proteins come together after cleavage to form a heterodimer protease that is essential for cleaving the Zika polypeptide. The Gleason lab found that expression of the active but not protease dead form of Zika protease was sufficient for cell death. We considered that the Zika protease could cleave a protein required for neuronal division. We performed affinity purification using recombinant Zika protease with human neuroprogenitor lysates. And unfortunately, we didn't find any known microcephaly gene products, but what we found was most of the members of the septin cytoskeleton that are important in cell division. Septins form trimers and then extend these trimers to form filaments and rings. Septins were importantly identified as key regulators of cytokinesis, so we wondered whether the Zika protease could cleave one of the septins, uh, leading to defects in cell division and explaining some features of microcephaly. We found that Zika protease bound directly to septin 2 and cleaved it specifically at residue 306 that just happened to contain a perfect Zika protease cleavage site. Zika infection also led to cleavage of septin 2. Knockdown of septin genes led to defects in cell division that were very similar to what we observed following Zika infection or following Zika protease expression. Mutation of septin 306 residue to a non-cleavable residue block this cleavage, and finally expression of this non-cleavable septin was sufficient to rescue the cytokinesis defects seen with expression of the Zika protease in neuroprogenitors. So we conclude that one mechanism by which Zika produces toxicity is through the protease running rampant in the host cells cleaving host proteins, and we think that septins is one of those important substrates. Several questions emerge from this research. First, is this mechanism Producing microcephaly, does it contribute to microcephaly in humans? We think so, but we still lack direct proof in human fetal brain infected with Zika. Is this cleavage beneficial for Zika? We don't see evidence that septin cleavage benefits Zika in any way. Flavivirus proteases can cleave host proteins for its own benefit. For example, flaviviruses cleave FAM134B to co-opt the ER to help with viral budding. They also cleave human, but not mouse, STAT2 and STING proteins as a way to evade the type 1 interferon response. Another question is, is cleavage of septin 2 specific to Zika or particular strains of Zika? We think not. Zika protease has much higher specific activity than other flavivirus proteases, but we also see that other flaviviral proteases are capable of cleaving septin 2, but those viruses might not have access to the fetal brain to induce similar uh, disease. Could protease inhibitors be used to fight Zika? We think so. Protease inhibitors are a mainstay of treatment for HIV and hepatitis C virus. 
but the challenge in preventing microcephaly is that protease inhibitors generally do not have good access to the fetal circulation or across the blood-brain barrier. Perhaps their use would lower maternal titer to prevent fetal infection. Thank you. Thanks for watching.